Okay, and welcome to the uh, second video here. We're doing some rapid prototyping using silhouettes. I've got a few that I've just created uh, quite quickly here in Photoshop. As we can see, they're all in their own individual layers. Uh, it's just doing a nice little line up so we can examine and sort of define which ones we want to uh, work on next. So uh, I'm going to go to my selection tool here. Shortcut is V. Um, you'll notice with the selection tool, the, sorry, the move tool here, um, we do have an option for auto select. Um, and as I click on these, you'll notice it'll correspond with the layers and even the, uh, the smart layer there as well. Um, I typically will have this turned off. Um, at the moment, it's nice and simple. We've only got six objects here and a black and a background, um, but as we get more complex, we get uh, masking and uh, transparencies and semi-transparent objects. Auto selects going to get in the way. We're going to think we're moving one object we've got selected, and then all of a sudden it'll pick on someone else. So typically, I'll have that turned off. So I'm going to rely on my panel here. If I do want to have that turned on temporarily, um, I can click Control, and as I click Control, which I'm doing at the moment, you can see it turns on auto select and that will allow me to to manually go through and use that option anyway so it's it's you know no real biggie um, but I still have the freedom of you know moving my objects as required so I'm going to go through and have a quick look at these and sort of define one in particular just do a little bit of a cleanup on them uh, I'm going to go for this little character here um, and I'm going to duplicate him a couple of ways we can duplicate him here there he is in there so I can drag this down into my duplicate layer there. Uh, my other option is, if I hold down Alt, you can see that this little white arrow appears under the black arrow, and that's my cue that I can actually duplicate that character. Move them across to the right, hit Control T, and then I'm gonna scale up again, holding down Shift, just to sort of keep the parameters for that. Hit the tick or hit Enter once we've got him there. Once I've got him there, I'm going to hit E for Erase and do a little bit of cleanup. Um, B for Brush, do any additions or subtractions that uh, might be necessary for the character. Um, and just, you know, we're, we're, we're using our imagination a lot for this. If you want to add some stuff to it, great. Uh, if you want to subtract some stuff, great. And we just want to get ourselves a nice, solid silhouette. Now we can change stuff later on. But uh, you know, for the for the uh, you know immediate um, bit, uh, we can you know just see what we can come up with. It might look kind of cool. Uh, it's kind of look like like some sort of warrior at the moment. So I might turn him into a, a brutish character. Um, again, E for erase, B for brush. Play around with your brush sizes here. Um, not too sure what I'm going to do with this, but um, you know, sometimes we can we can evolve stuff. Might turn this into some sort of weird sword device. It's got it hanging over his shoulder. Very gruesome. Um, looks like he's got a bit of a head tilt. So anyway, I'm going to be doing going through this pretty quick, uh, just as a video presentation. So um, a lot less detail than I would typically uh, put in on a finished product. So anyway, um, cool. Okay. Um, so just a little bit of house cleaning with this. I'm going to drag this to the top layer. These other characters here, great. Um, if they are getting a distraction. Um, typically what you can do is if you shift select all of those go down to this little uh, what looks like a folder option here I'm just going to put them in a folder group right there they're all still there um, when they're in a group we can control T transform the group so they're all done together or we can just hide those guys um, and put them right there so you know we can put them out of the way if need be but you know if we want to keep them company they're welcome there. Um, just a quick one, if you are running out of room on your page, C for crop, 
Uh, it's over here on the toolbar, um, right there. It's going to bring us up. And this is going to allow us to adjust our screen size up and down. So if we need a bit more space horizontally or vertically, we can do so. Um, just be cautious that the extension color, that means that as we extend it out, is going to be based on our secondary color here. So if I change that to red and extend out, you can see that the background is now going to be red. So um, if your background's white, you know what, just make sure that's white there and we can we can extend that out. But um, I'm pretty happy with the, the size there, so I'm just going to cancel that. And let's go on to our next level. So once we've cleaned up our silhouette, let's click out of that. Um, I'm actually going to create a mask for this. Now, masks are one of the handiest things in Photoshop. Um, they allow us to block out an area and just focus in on that. So when we do come to painting this up a little bit, getting a bit more definition, masks are going to be our friend. And this is one of the reasons why we do big, solid lines with this. We're not doing sort of uh, light fluffy lines or anything like that. It's a big solid shape. We want to make sure it's a solid silhouette, not necessarily a line drawing. If it's a line drawing, it's going to be harder for us to select around the shape. Not impossible, but just a little bit more work. Because this is a solid object, we've got a couple of options. One is going to W for Magic Wand Tool. And the wand tool uh, is going to be based on selecting a area of a particular color. In this case, it's going to be solid black. Uh, continuous means it's going to run until it selects, uh, until it runs into a border. Um, in this case, we should be okay. It should select the whole area. Um, in some other objects, like this robot guy here with a butterfly or bird or whatever it is, um, he's going to run into some issues because that's going to hit the white space and select. But anyway, um, I'm going to control D, deselect that anyway. And rather than using that, I'm actually going to go to this little window box in my layers panel. And by hitting on control, you'll notice that the hand as I hover over the window gets a little square around it. And that's our option to select whatever's in that layer. And remember, this is on a transparent layer. So if I select, um, if we go into there and hit control, I'm going to click in there. And we can start seeing that we get these marching ants, which is basically selecting that layer um, just by itself. So everything else isn't selected. I'm then going to create a mask for this. So once selected, I'm going to go down to this little button here. Now this uh, is basically a rectangle with a with a circle in the middle of it. This is our mask tool. If you hover over for long enough, um, it'll come up and say add layer mask. I'm going to click on that. And we'll notice in our layers here, we have, um, looks almost like a negative of the image, but it's showing where the mask is. Um, now, the mask is typically, uh, anything pure white is going to be visible. In this case, it's our silhouette. Anything that's going to be black is going to be invisible. Now, we're going to be using this mask quite often um, as a reference point. So, um, and you'll also notice there's a link uh, icon between that. And I'll get to that in just a little bit. So I'm going to create a new layer. Fantastic. This is our silhouette layer. A new layer. And I'm going to hit control. And you can see there's the selection there. I'm going to select back on that mask that I've just created there. And we've got our marching ants again. And on my new layer, I'm going to hit, oh, let's make sure we select it on correctly. And I'm going to select there, and that's created a mask in this new blank layer. So if I turn off that layer, turn off my groups, turn off my backgrounds, we actually have nothing there. We've got an empty layer. It has a mask on it, and I'm going to make sure I'm selected in this actual layer panel, not on the mask now. Very important. And what this basically means is that, I'm going to turn this background off so we can see, is that Everything we paint is only going to affect this white area, which is essentially where our previous one was. So if I select the brush and draw a line, you go, okay, well, I've just drawn it across the page. But you'll start noticing that as I start filling this in, see, it's only going to fill in exactly what is in that mask area, which happens to be 
uh, that shape of the character. So that's all well and good. I'm going to backspace from there because we don't need to fill that in black because we already have our silhouette below. So I'm going to select in there and I'm going to use this to add uh, my values. Now values are essentially dark to light uh, in gray scales um, typically and I'm going to try and start defining this character. Now I'm just going to quickly create a new layer for a demo and what we want to start looking at is or start thinking about is our light source. Where is our light coming from? So I'm typically going to, for this anyway, I'm going to have my light source sort of coming from front facing, so just in front of this guy, and sort of coming down in this direction. So what that means is the light's going to be hitting uh, this front, front facing side. We have more shadow on the other side, so it's just a nice strong light from here. Um, now that doesn't mean it's our only light source. Uh, we could get stuff like rim light coming through. We're going to get bounced light. We're going to get shadows, etc. But um, it's just a little reminder that we need to find a light source and kind of use that as our defining motion to for our character. So I'm going to turn that off. Let's actually delete that. Uh, we don't need that sunshine thing anymore. Back to the layer again. Make sure you select it in uh, this empty box, not on your mask. You don't want to be drawing on your mask at this point. You just want to be filling in there. Alright, so let's start getting some light and dark values for this guy. Now I'm going to select on my brush again, shortcut B, and I'm going to change this brush. Uh, silhouette brush was great, round solid. Uh, I'm going to select a soft brush for this. So something like this brush here. Great. And I'm going to change the parameters again. So I'm opening up my preferences here. And I'm going to change this around. This is almost going to be the opposite to that solid brush. Shape dynamics is set to pen pressure. I'm actually going to turn that off for now anyway. Um, and you can untick it as well. Transfer. I'm going to turn that to pen pressure. Great. Um, now I've actually got some options turned on here. I actually need to turn those off as well. And what you're going to find is with transfer, which is basically affecting the opacity, turn to print at pen pressure, um, means that as I draw the pen or the brush, uh, the Wacom's only going to affect uh, the opacity of this. So I'm going to switch black to white and Again, you may want to adjust your opacity of your brush as it's going through, but as I start drawing, you see it's going to start allowing me to add lighter areas. Now, we want fairly broad strokes for this to start with, but I'm going to start attempting to define my character. So I already know I have a light source coming in from the top right, so I can start just plotting in and saying, okay, well, that's kind of like an arm there. This is kind of like an arm there, the light's going to be hitting here. And we can start getting the basics of our character. And again, nice light brush strokes. If it's coming out too light, you can drop the opacity down and you can build it up over multiple layers. Um, and this is going to get this very nice soft cell shading effect. Um, you can go back in the opposite, we can go back to black. I've got black and white picked here. Um, if you want to switch between your two colors, whoop, uh, in this case I've got black and white, letter X will flip between those. Um, so you can start you know, redefining your shadows again. And again, just nice big sort of dark and light area strokes for this just to start uh, defining your character early. Um, and just getting the, the lights coming in first. X again and I'm just going to start defining a little bit more. Build, 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 etc, etc. And we can start building up our character. Um, and this is a pretty rapid technique. We can really start getting some form happening um, pretty quick and you know, by adjusting our brush size um, you know, we can start getting a little bit more, more detail. Um, and again, the harder you press on the on the, the Wacom with this setting, um, sort of the more um, 
sort of flow is going to come through on on your brush so you can you can get some some pretty stuff quick stuff happening pretty quick from this um, so anyway we're starting to see how this is coming coming together um, flipping around between dark and light defining our characters a little bit and we can start coming through with that pretty simply. Like so. Don't forget to zoom in and out as required. He's looking kind of a bit like a bit of a brute. Um, and we usually do this in passes. Uh, you know, just block in some areas and then we can always go in and you know, put in details a little bit later on. Um, some of the areas aren't quite working for me, but that's fine. Um, once you start getting some variances, um, and what I mean variances is um, variances in and out of light and dark, um, you can use uh, the Alt key to bring up your eyedropper. So I, uh, rather than jumping between black and white, I can sort of go, you know, I'm going to go sort of a dark gray area uh, like so, and pick that, and that's going to save you from having a either pick the eyedropper or bring up a swatch palette or something crazy like that. Um, so let's just pick out a few extra bits in this. I might actually go solid black for this. This hand's not really doing it for me, so let's might do some adjustment for this. Um, sometimes your silhouettes aren't uh, exact the way that you want them, but um, it's all part of the fun. Um, I might actually change this guy a little bit. So um, again, you know, if we want to change things around, um, we can do so. So in this instance, I'm actually going to go uh, back to my silhouette, and I'm not liking this this arm situation here. So I'm going to go back to my uh, my silhouette. I'm going to reapply my mask. So I'm going to click on that. I'm going to go apply layer mask. That's going to get rid of the mask. It's basically going to take me back to that. And I'm just going to just reapply. I'm going to get rid of that arm altogether. I wasn't liking it. Um, click back to the other one. You can see, you know, that's still got the mask applied uh, to it. So, you know, that's, that's fine there. But it just wasn't quite hanging there correctly. I'm going to get rid of this sword as well. Um, this is kind of why it's good to get the, the, you know, make sure your silhouette's working a bit better. Uh, I'm going to go back to my solid brush. Hopefully my settings are still there. Uh, shape dynamics check. And um, I'm just going to click that off. And let's just quickly, oh, we've got something on. Shape dynamics is pen pressure. Transfer should be off. And, ah, spacing's down. Okay. Capacities down as well. That's why. And I'm just going to do sort of a hand down here, and maybe we can just give him a he's holding a sword behind him or something like that instead. And. This Wacom does seem to have some weird effects popping up with the shift key for, some, for no particular reason other than it just being difficult. Alright, that's kind of working for me. Alright, I'm going to change this. Um, so, you know, turning this visibility back on. Um, you know, I could redo some of this, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit. Uh, Control again 
into this layer here. I'm going to select him and just reapply uh, that mask. So click in here, whoop. hit the mask key. There he is there. This top one here, I'm going to click on my mask and delete layer mask. And I'm going to hit control select on my old mask, well, my newly created mask below. Go to the, the layer with my grayscales and just reapply the mask. So I've taken the mask from here, have it selected, and then placing it up here. And you can see straight away we can go back and just select my nice soft brush again. And I can start. Uh, shape is on. I actually want transfer on to pen pressure. And shape dynamics off just for this. So this is just doing some light. Um, you know, getting the light and shadow affected from the brush. Remember, Alt is going to allow me to to pick out some areas. Again, it's acting a little bit weird, but um, that's fine. happening underneath. Oh, there is, it keeps jumping from one thing to the next, which is very strange. Sorry. The um, Wacom tablet is not responding well to my shift key, so anyway, or my alt key. All right, um, and this is essentially where we can just start building up details over and over again pretty quickly, um, and we start refining our characters. Uh, again, I'm not going to go full detail with this. Um, suffice to say, uh, we can really start getting in detail. But you know, once again, just start off with big broad strokes. Um, get your your values. Correct. So values are essentially your your light and dark areas, um, and you want to do those in some you know some fairly large, broad strokes. Um, so that way you can you know get your character sort of locked down before we get carried away into into too much detail. Um, it's very easy to sort of go oh I want to go you know straight to detail, but you know. Get your character working properly first. All right. So I'll do a few more lines, and then we can. I'll, I'll, I'll sort of jump into the next uh, next section for this. All right. Let's have a look at this guy. Um, you know, it's it, it's getting there. It's not fantastic, but it's getting there. All right. I'm going to jump into the next stage. Um, and you know, this is going to be just sort of a, a next level thing. So I'm going to pause the video there and then we'll start off onto the 